Hi, Rainy Bastarash here, and today I'd like to speak to you about how to supercharge your goals and your desires. Now, you hear lots of people talking about how the mind, whatever the mind focuses on, it attracts to you. You hear about the law of attraction, and there's not a lot of I guess you could say instructions on how to do it because some people are trying to attract health and wealth and relationships and happiness and you have this goal and you're focusing on it and you want it and you want it and it just doesn't seem to come. Why? Well, there's one important factor that is missing usually and that's emotion. That's what I want to speak to you about, emotion. Now think about your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is your mind of programs. It's like a computer. All these programs ever since you were born are stored in your subconscious mind. So look at yourself as two, I guess, uh, two separate entities. You, yourself, are the conscious mind. The subconscious mind is not you. It is a computer. It is your programming. You know, most of your programming that you're using right now has been complete by 12 years old. All the things you learned, all the habits, the habits, the habits. So think about these habits. Let's pick one up like uh, driving a car, okay? You learned how to drive a car if you drive, and it took a while to learn how to drive. Now, if I told you where everywhere you went you needed to drive backwards on the other side of the street, how long will it take you to create a new habit of driving backwards on the other side of the street? Because you got used to doing it the way you're doing it right now. Same thing with the language, okay? If you, it took you a long time to learn a second language, let's say Spanish, and I take you to a country where you think they speak Spanish, but they speak, uh, let's see, uh, they speak French, okay? I know there's a lot of similarities, but how long will it take you to be comfortable and speaking French, you need to build a new habit. So when you're trying to change things like your health, wealth, relationships, and happiness, it's not always as easy as you might think. It's going to take some work to do it. So you create a goal. Let's talk about the goals that you might have right now, goals or desires. Choose one of the major goals you have. Is it exciting? When you think about the goal that you want to create, is it exciting? Does it create emotion? Now, why am I talking about emotion? I just mentioned all these habits before, all this programming. About well, the majority, we're not going to get into percentages, but the majority of decisions you make today, when you get the stimuli in front of you where you have to make a decision, the majority of the decisions you make from your past memories. We call it the bridge technique, just like this bridge you see behind me, okay? What happens is when you're confronted with something, let's say you got to walk across this little two by four going over a ravine. You immediately associate that with something from your past. And if there's an emotion from it, maybe you fell down when you were a five year old child riding a bike across a, uh, a two by four or a plank or something like that, you immediately bridge from one side to the other, okay? You bridge from this emotion to the next one or to the previous one when it first happened, and you terrorize. Now, there's nothing bad about walking across the two by four, it's easy, but because you fell before, your association, the emotion is really strong. And that's how you make a lot of the decisions. A lot of them are bridged to when you first had something like that happen, and the emotion, I guess you could say, pegs it there, makes it uh, a habit. Because we have two basic ways of learning. As a child, we learn monkey see, monkey do, and you pick up things quickly. But once you're past age 12, the two ways you learn is one, through extreme emotion, an emotional event, and number two, repetition. So I'm going to show you how to do it using both, okay? So if you can get emotional about your goals, that emotion becomes part of you. You're rerouting your neural connections. You're creating, I guess you could say, a thumbtack in your subconscious. So the emotion with the repetition is going to help that new habit to either become, uh, that new goal, I mean, to either become a habit or to replace the existing habit. So your new language, if you're trying to speak a new language, if you're really excited about it, is going to be able to 
override or become a habit with the old language. You don't want to get rid of the old languages that you know, but it will be it'll be able to become a habit just like them a lot quicker. If you have to drive differently and the old way of driving is completely gone, then the new habit will replace the old habit. So if you have a habit right now of spending all your money as soon as you get it, okay, some people, no matter how much money you give them, it's gone within a few hours, okay, or a short time. So you want to get rid of the habit and replace it with one of success, okay? If the more emotional you can get about your successful goal, the better. So think about the habit that you want to have right now. Uh, the goal that you want to create, whatever it is, is there emotion in it? If you can become emotional about it, it will come a lot quicker. So how can you make it emotional? Well, number one, if it's not emotional, or if you don't have any emotion going with it, if it doesn't excite you somehow, maybe it's not big enough. So you say, this month I'm going to make $3,000. Well, you probably make that every month anyway, pretty close to it. So that's not really a stretch. That's not really going to excite me. But this month, I'm going to make $30,000. Ooh, that's exciting if you haven't done that before. So reach for something a little bit bigger. I always tell people to, when you create goals, they should be a little scary. But if you do reach them, think about how excited you'll be, how great it will be. So maybe your goal, number one, isn't big enough. Or if it is big enough, maybe it seems unattainable. If it does, then break it down into bite-sized pieces, okay? I call it the buying-in principle. Do you believe you can attain this? It's kind of like if you can't walk to the mailbox and back, your goal shouldn't be to run a marathon, okay? That's, you can't buy into that. It's just not possible, or you don't think it's possible, so you're not going to try for it. But... Your goal can be to run a marathon, but how about this week your goal is to run a quarter mile. Next week is going to be a mile. Then once you've reached that, two miles. And once you've reached that, five miles. Take it in bite-sized pieces. Remember the saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Otherwise, you'll choke. But the goal is still the elephant, the big thing, the big picture. So make your goals exciting. Are they not exciting enough? Are they too big that you have to break them down? Another problem where there might not be excitement, is it your goal? Is it a goal that you really want? Or did your spouse want you to do it? Does your spouse want you to quit smoking and you don't really don't want to? Does your spouse want you to do whatever it is, but it's not really your thing, but ah, I'll do it to make him or her happy? Okay, then there's not going to be excitement there because it's not something that you want to do. So you might want to uh, reframe or rethink your goal or even find different reasons why you want to do it. If it happens to be quit smoking, think about how you're going to live longer. You're going to be healthier. You're going to have the wind to walk up and down the stairs. You'll be able to play with your grandchildren when they get older because people that don't smoke live longer than those that do. For the most part, of course, there's always the exception like George Burns, okay? <laughs> but so what is the goal? Is it not big enough? Is it too big and you don't think you can get it at once? Is it someone else's goal? Um, or is it something you just, you don't really care either way? Should you just choose another goal? So think about that. With whatever the goal that you have, is it exciting? Does it bring an emotion? If it doesn't, Make it emotional. Be emotional. Look at that. Look at my emotion. <laughs> okay, emotion attracts things. It supercharges things. Look at it this way. Thoughts create things. Okay, you need to have the thought. Everything that was ever created started with a thought. Then your imagination makes it into a vehicle so you can move it. So now you have the thought which is the raw material, you imagine it and it can move like a vehicle, okay? And of course you have a little gas in it, but emotion supercharges the vehicle, so whoom, it takes off fast. So emotion is your supercharge. And for those people that drive cars, it's your nitrous oxide, which is what supercharges the gas in the car. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope you get emotional about it and if you know anyone else that you think can use this, people who are trying to attain things, goals, going to college, whatever it is, please share this lesson with them. They'll appreciate it and they'll thank you for it.
Now, if you'd like to learn more about how your mind works and attaining your goals and helping other people to attain theirs, because there's a lot of things that you can do to help yourself to improve, go ahead and click on, click on the link below this video and you'll see several options. Option one will tell you about how to get our free 446 page hypnosis manual. Option two and option three will show you really great ways to take our live online hypnosis certification courses, which will change your life. So be sure to click on the subscribe button below and give us a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.